Learn about the new Python package that makes it easy for you to integrate between Langchain and SQL, and how you can use AI capabilities from ground to cloud to Fabric, the SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, and SQL Database in Fabric. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Mazma, who is no stranger to Data Exposed. Mazma leads the SQLDB developer and AI team at Microsoft. Mazma, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for having me here again. Always a pleasure. You always bring a very exciting AI topic, and I always learn a ton. So I'm excited, and our viewers are excited. Today, we're going to be learning about Langchain and SQL and how to build apps with that. So I will pass it over to you. Tell me, what, what do we need to know? Yeah, thank you. Thanks again for having me. And it's super exciting, as you know, that we recently announced uh, native vector support and vector capabilities in uh, almost all flavors of SQL. So we are really excited to see what can developers and uh, and data engineers and data scientists and others can build with this app, uh, with this um, capabilities. And I'm here to talk about Langchain. And before I go into Langchain, I really want to mention that all of these capabilities are available across the Microsoft SQL, ground to cloud to fabric. And AI is a big component for that. And vector capabilities are also available across all. So really excited for that and uh, excited to show you what we have. Awesome. So does that mean that it doesn't matter you know, which SQL kind of flavor I'm using. If I want to access, for example, Vector or any other capabilities that come in the future, I can use any of them or will it come to one before the others? What do I need to know there? Yeah, as of right now, today's date, every all of these vector capabilities and integrations are available across all flavors of SQL. So that includes SQL Database, Azure SQL Database. It includes SQL Database and Fabric, the next version of SQL Server 2025, and SQL MI as well. So it will work across all of the flavors because it's core capability into the T-SQL engine, and then we ship across all of them uh, as those things get released in the different options that we have. Great. I love it. So what we have, uh, just before I go into the details, uh, why we're talking about Langchain today is a very uh, popular open source framework, uh, which is used to actually build, uh, developers use that to build Gen AI applications. You can build chatbots, you can build multi-agent architectures, you can build AI agents. There are a lot of other things that you can build with this. So I'm going to talk, keep it very simple and straightforward today to show you a chatbot application, uh, basically chatting with your data or searching or using semantic searching on your data using a chatbot uh, type application with SQL. And uh, while laying Langchain, as I mentioned, is one of the most popular ones, there are some other frameworks as well, and we are making sure that we have first-party support to all of them. Uh, what we have introduced and what's new is the Langchain um, package. So if you go to PyPy, you can simply just do pip install langchain-sql server, and this should work across, as I mentioned, all flavors of SQL. And it's a simple pip install, so it works with uh, with any of your Python codes. Um, so definitely check this out. All of the documentations and updates are also available in the blog that we will be uh, sharing with this video. Awesome, that's great. And I'm guessing this package just makes it easier for me to integrate Langchain and SQL together. Yeah, so the main purpose is that it's very simple, few lines of code, you get it installed. And once it's installed, you can start using Langchain native vector store capabilities to build any advanced in AI applications. So we have uh, lots of examples. So I had to actually pick and choose which one to show today. So I'm choosing a SQL database and fabric chatbot application. Uh, but you can, uh, you can see a notebook in the first example there where we have um, a Python notebook that goes through a, a Kaggle data set, and then you can actually use uh, Langchain with SQL over there. We have several other examples to this one, which has all of our vector examples, so definitely bookmark this uh, repository, and uh, you can find a lot of other examples there as well. Awesome, cool. Oh yeah, can we take a look at something? Yes, let's see the demo. So before I go into the demo, this is the blog. Uh, this blog is written by Arun and my team. Uh, he is um, he's a great uh, product manager on this side of things, and he's built this uh, great application. Again, this is a very simple blog. In like five minutes or so, you should be up and running, and you should. it has all these step-by-step -step instructions how to set this up, so I will not take a lot of time here, and basically just show you the actual application uh, in, in, the, in the works. 
what it is is basically we have the Azure uh, Azure SQL database or SQL DB in Fabric, regardless as I mentioned, whatever SQL version you have. We're using the integration that comes within SQL to actually call any external REST endpoint using the stored procedure called SP Invoke REST endpoint. Uh, using that, we are actually uh, calling uh, Azure OpenAI in this case for embeddings and also for chat completions. And that is basically completing the RAG pattern, uh, what we call a typical chatbot application in this case to chatting with your data. And why we're using Azure Function here is as soon as your data lands, you want to update the embeddings, which is the kind of vector representation of that text. And your actually chat is very ref like up to date and what we call truly an operational rack. Uh, so this is the architecture again. You can learn more about that. And on the front end side of it, we're using um, another open source library called Chainlit. Again, it's very simple. Uh, it comes with integration with Langchain, so that's why we chose it. You can choose another, any one of your favorite ones, or you can write your own front end in React or any of your favorite front end applications as well. Uh, so end to end, very simple, few steps, and and you have the application up and running with chatting with your application uh, data for any types that you have the data stored in SQL. Awesome. Okay, let's see this in action. So. I have this uh, application already running. Uh, just to quickly show you the code for that, just to kind of uh, mention that in my Visual Studio code, uh, this is the application, uh, the the app dot py, the, the the Python code. Uh, the main thing, the first thing to look here is uh, I'm not going to go into all of the details here, here but uh, all of that is mentioned in the blog in much detail. Uh, this is the pro prompt engineering we are doing, and we are telling the Azure OpenAI endpoint to be a recommender for products. In this particular database, we have uh, Contoso Wireless, so we have several products that you can use, such as headphones or earbuds and things like that. And, and we're building a chat application to actually find uh, find the products that, that are best for what you're using as a user. Uh, all we have to do here is basically run through the instructions and, and run, the, uh, run, run this basically and get this up and going with three lines of code. And once you have that, you have a front end like this. So I've already executed a couple of uh, queries here. For example, what are recommendations for wireless chargers? Uh, this is the one line summary for that. This is an actual product coming from the table. Uh, and, and, and you can see that it basically ran on the background a relevant product. Uh, procedure, stored procedure that we had written, and then actually goes, takes the data back to Azure OpenAI to complete that and run through. Again, you can keep on uh, running for other things and you'll get multiple results. On the background, what we have here is, uh, is a SQL database in Fabric, and this is the interface, and this is great. Uh, and very simple, very easy to use and optimize for AI. Uh, here you can see in this uh, Contoso chat database, I have a few tables, products and product embeddings. You can have a complex one as well. Uh, what When we are actually doing the chat application, what is actually executed is a stored procedure. In this case, what is called find relevant products. And I'm just going to run this uh, quickly for you uh, to see the results. In this case, I'm looking for what are some recommendations for earbuds. And I'm looking for the top N matches to the search that I've done. Um, and here you can see it's returning the data from the table itself with the product name, description, price, category, and the cosine similarity of what I'm searching versus what is stored in the data. Um, and um, just to show you the procedure behind the scenes is, is this one. Uh, here what we are doing is this new capability of vector distance. We're using cosine distance of what is the input query vector what was the input text I had inputted as the, the, the recommendation for, for earbuds versus what is stored in the table as embeddings. And then we're finding cosine distance between them. And, and from there, it, it just defines basically the top 10, top N number of whatever you want to look for. Uh, very simple, uh, very well integrated in your TC call, uh, the, the language that you're all familiar with and bringing AI to your data where it is, uh, where you already have all the data stored in SQL. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mahatma. This was an awesome demo. I learned a lot. I'm excited to go try the sample. I hope other people are going to go try the sample too. Uh, it's great that you already have it as a blog so people can follow along. I've actually followed along one of the other blogs and they are super easy to follow along. You can get this set up. Um, so thanks so much. Any final tips or tricks for folks? 
Yeah, so all the links are here. There is a lot of information out there. So definitely try out at least one sample end to end. Uh, anything in this AI and Azure SQL, Azure SQL DB or SQL database and fabric category, definitely try out. Uh, that you can learn end to end uh, steps. As I mentioned, Langchain is also adding a lot of new things. For example, they have new capabilities like LangGraph and a few others, which you can actually use to build more complex applications, such as agentic applications. So more to come on that. Would love to come back and show you one of those examples in the future. Uh, but right now, um, this is very simple with the, the new Langchain integration that we have for SQL Server. And again, it works for all flavors of SQL. So if you're on-prem or in cloud or in fabric, definitely try it out and give us any feedback back uh, and these are all in open source so if you have any uh, any feedback or comments you can actually directly contribute to these libraries as well awesome thanks so much Mazma. again i learned a lot and uh for viewers i think Mazma gave you a little challenge there to go try this out between now and when she comes up with her next sample which we can't wait to have her back on the show for uh so if you like this episode go ahead give it a like leave us a comment and let us know what you plan to build with uh, things like LangChain and SQL together. Uh, and we'll put all those links in the description so you can learn more easily. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.